Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to my first ever uh, video that I decided to post online uh, just for recreational purposes. Uh, today in this video, what, we're what I'm going to be going over is the uh, basically bullet velocity versus temperature analysis or study. Okay, and what that means is uh, basically I want to go over how is it that your muzzle velocity is affected by the conditions, the, the weather conditions of any particular day in which you are shooting. Um, so that's kind of the, the summary. That's what I want to go over. Uh, specifically in this video, I'm going to be doing it for 22 long rifle ammo. So I'm going to be kind of showing you guys trends uh, in terms of how different types of ammo are, are affected by temperature. Those four types of ammo I want to cover are uh, SK rifle match, uh, CCI standard velocity, uh, RWS semi-auto, and then finally we got the LE Force, which uh, of course is the 338 Lapua Magnum of rimfire rifles. Um, okay, so why is it that I want to go over this video? Uh, it's basically to be able to show or demonstrate that uh, 22 long rifle is definitely sensitive to, to outside temperature variations, uh, depending. Okay, Some of these animals are very sensitive and some others are less sensitive. Um, and the reason why I kind of want to go over it is because by knowing the behavior of ammunition, uh, depending on the, the external temperature, you will better be able to predict what your velocity will be at any given temperature. So basically, you're going to get collect a few data points, be able to, de to, to plot a line, and predict what you think the velocity is going to be for whatever temperature you, you can imagine. Okay, so I, I guess I'll give you guys a little bit of a backstory as to why I want to I want to cover this uh, particular video, and it's basically uh, starts off about uh, about a year ago. Okay, so call it uh, 2018, May 2018. Um, uh, by this point, I had been exposed to uh, precision rifle series uh, PRS matches, and I you know didn't really know a whole lot about it. One of my buddies uh, told me essentially about uh, a new uh, Canadian rimfire precision series, okay, CRPS. Uh, most of you are probably going to be familiar with this, but basically what it is, it's a it's a 22 long rifle um, competition. Okay, it's all a 22 long rifle rimfire competition that uses the 22 long rifle out to distances just around you know three to four hundred meters. All right, most of the engagement distances are going to be within. 300 meters, and then there's maybe one or two targets out, way out there at 400 meters. Okay, so he invited me to this event, and uh, I was really excited. I haven't really shot 22 long rifle uh, to, to any sort of distance beyond maybe 100 meters before, so I, I got right into it. I went and got myself a Savage Mark II, uh, a little Cabela's Covenant scope, whipped those together, and then I decided, okay, well, the first thing I got to do now is my uh, bullet selection, okay, w what cartridge am I going to be using? So to do that, I basically went and selected a few types of ammo, uh, not of which, it wasn't these four, uh, I believe uh, it was SK Rifle Match, it was uh, CCI Mini Mags, uh, LE 10X, and then it was a, uh, let me see here, yes, it's Federal uh, Auto Match, okay, that, that kind of bulk box of 325 Federal. Uh, basically, I took those out to my local range, uh, out to 40 or 50 yards, basically 46 meters, and I, I was just selecting my ammo purely based off of velo uh, accuracy. Okay, what kind of groups could I produce at 50 meters or 50 yards? Sorry. And then my results there were basically that the SK rifle match was the winner. Okay, it was fantastic. I, I was producing groups at 50 uh, yards, pretty well below 50 uh, or half an inch. Fairly consistently, okay. Naturally, if I'm not paying attention, there's going to be the occasional flyer. But by and large, this was producing uh, the best groups out of my rifle. So I went ahead and decided to go with it. Following that range session, I basically went to um, a local plot of land uh, and uh, checked my my real uh, bullet drop at uh, 200, 200, and 300 meters uh, with a 50 yard zero. Okay, so basically, uh, I just had my ballistic calculator in there. I estimated what my predicted. Um, and I measure my velocity, and then using that velocity, threw it into my ballistic calculator that has, you know, ballistic coefficient, all that kind of stuff. Estimated I predicted point of impact at 100, 200, 300. I then actually shot it, got my corrected um, point of impact, wrote those in, made note of them, uh, and then pretty much that was that. I went ahead to the match uh, and shot my shot the day, and my, that, that was a fantastic experience. It was very fun. Uh, you know, there was there was a lot to be learned there in terms of positional shooting stuff that I haven't really done before. Uh, but one thing that I did notice is that on some of the more stable stages where you're in a prone position and you were engaging targets, uh, you know, out to two, three hundred meters, I was hitting a lot. I was missing a lot of those targets 
uh, yeah, absolutely, wind would have been an impact, but I, I, it seemed as though I was hitting low, high, and you know, I didn't really know what was going on at a particular point. Um, so basically, that was that. Fast forward about two weeks after the match, um, I went back to the range and I, I tried to establish uh, kind of a baseline, what's going on, how can I correct this? So what I did there was I uh, did the same process, showed up to the range, or showed up to my shooting location, I took a chronograph reading, and then I went ahead and calculated my predicted drop at 100, 203 meters, and then I got my corrected bullet drop at 100, 200, 300 meters. And what I noticed is that the bullet drop from one day to the other was different. The actual bullet drop from one day to the other was different. The actual velocity from one day to the other was different. And the temperature was different from one day to the other. So this kind of got me thinking, there's, a, there's obviously some sort of a correlation here, uh, and that is that the temperature appears to affect the muzzle velocity, and then naturally because it's affecting the muzzle velocity, it's also affecting your point of impact. Okay, so then whenever I establish this, basically I became aware that this ammo is temperature sensitive. sensitive. So I have to account for that. And in order to do that, I basically collected data points uh, at several temperatures. So basically anytime I went to the range, I collected the data points. So I got a data point for uh, 40 degrees Fahrenheit, 50 degrees Fahrenheit, 80 degrees Fahrenheit, 73 degrees Fahrenheit, whatever it may be. And then I got my associated velocities. I plotted those on a curve and then I made a, a predicted line, okay? Basically a line of best fit to be able to see what is my estimated bullet velocity, no matter what the temperature is outside, okay? So that was kind of my approach, what I did. Uh, and what I'm gonna do now is I'm kind of gonna shift to a paper to describe exactly what that process is. Um, and then once I've kind of shown you that process, I'm going to explain what got me motivated to test different types of ammunition. So let's go right into it. Okay, so basically now that we're uh, back, I'm all set up here, uh, I'm going to go over what kind of um, procedure did I go over to get a, a trend for my bullet velocity. So basically this is kind of what it looked like. I went on, on one day, uh, you know, uh, we got uh, day, temperature, and then muzzle velocity. All right. Basically, on day I went on day one, then day two, day three, day four, day five, and then I got my temperature. Uh, you know, we got uh, forty degrees F, fifty degrees F. Um, call it uh, seventy degrees F, thirty-five degrees F, and then eighty degrees F. And then I found my bullet associated bullet velocities which, you know, were whatever particular value for that day. I then went ahead in Excel and I just basically made a very simple graph, uh, something to this effect, where on our, our y-axis here, we've got uh, our, our velocity in uh, at feet per second, and then down on this axis, we have the temperature, uh, which in this case is in degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, and then from there I plotted my one, two, three, four, five points. Okay, so basically we've got uh, our, you know, point uh, four, which is this one here, then we got, you know, this one, and then we have this one, and then this one, and something like that. Okay, basically it's kind of a little bit scattered, but, you know, I may have showed these exact. This one may have been over here, you know, and, and it, the, 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 that is a little bit sporadic. So basically from that, I, there's obviously a, a, there was obviously some sort of a trend that I was noticing. So I decided, okay, well, I'm just going to plot a best line of best fit, something along those lines where some of these points are below, some of them are above, uh, and then I can estimate what this would be. So, you know, I estimate this slope. So essentially from this, I get a, I get some sort of a slope, you know, out of Excel. It's all automated. So I'm, I'm just kind of showing you guys the, the thought process here. But basically once I get my slope, I'm able to use this as sort of like a, a model, okay? I'm able to predict what uh, my different temperatures or, or uh, sorry, what my velocity would be at different temperatures. So let's say, you know, I, I've now got this model and there's a temperature over here that I didn't really calculate data for, but so th this, this was 50 degrees F and over here, you know, it was 40 degrees F and I wanna know what is it at 45 degrees F. Basically, I'm just gonna, you know, use my line, go up and across and then I'm going to be able to get my velocity here and for this associated temperature. You know, similarly on any other day, you know, I could come up, up to here, call it that, uh, you know, whatever, 75 degrees F, go up to my line, come on over, and here's my velocity for that day. So basically, this is kind of a visual rep representation of what I did 
uh, and then how you're going to calculate it. But, but all you need to know with your ballistic calculators, you, you need to have two points on this line. Okay, you need to have a point over here and a point over here. So this is going to be, you know, uh, you've got, uh, sorry, my pen's not writing. But over here, you're going to have, you know, uh, degrees F uh, feet per second. That's one data point. And then over here, degrees F feet per second. Basically, you're going to use these two values. You're going to throw those into your ballistic calculator, and it's going to output your predicted uh, velocity, okay? The, if you're using Straylock Pro, it, it should include that automatically, all right? But basically, fast forward to this year, all right? This, this little thing that I did here, I did last year. Fast forward to this year, basically what happened was I uh, tried to be a little bit more creative and I collected a ton of data points, okay? All the way from, uh, I believe it was zero degrees Fahrenheit, which is about minus 18 degrees Celsius, okay? All the way up to, uh, oh boy, what was it? About 100 and, 110 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know the exact uh, conversion for Celsius here, but basically um, this is what I decided to do, all right? So I, I then calculated my, uh, my, my went and measured the velocity at each one of these temperatures, okay? And what I was finding was something along these lines. Okay, I, mean, I, I highlighted these ones on the ends, that's not really important, but basically there seemed to be some sort of a, like, yes, while I would agree that overall this is a linear trend, okay, I was finding that if I isolated certain types of the data, I was able to get a trend that went here and then alternatively I was able to get a, an even, you know, I don't know, a flatter trend. The data was a little sporadic and it didn't give me an exact good um, curve essentially, some not curve but line that would be able to predict what my velocity would be at any given point. I also had huge gaps here. So for any, obviously there were certain temperatures that I measured more than once. I was getting large variations here between my, my two sets of, of data points. Now keep in mind, each one of these points, okay, each one of these individual data points was was based on 10 shots, okay? It's based on 10 shots. It's a 10-shot average, and I was still getting a huge variation like this. So the conclusion there was, yeah, you know, like, this is great. I've got, I may be able to get a plot overall. I may be able to plot something that is, you know, okay, and it's good, and I, I'll be able to predict it with a reasonable amount of accuracy, but there's still an underlying problem here, and that is that this ammo is temperature sensitive, right? This ammo is temperature sensitive in terms of its its output velocity out of my rifle. So how can I fix that? Uh, basically, the only way that I could fix it was to try different ammo, because what I was looking for was I was looking to ignore the fact I was I want a solution that gives me a straight line, okay? Ammo that is independent of temperature. So what that came was basically the motivation to tr try these different types of ammunition. Okay, as I said, I've been using SK Rifle Match for a long time. This ammo is fantastic. It, it works really well, but I'm getting that, that temperature variation, so uh, I didn't really like it for that reason. I have a whole bunch of this stuff because this is my plinkin ammo. I shoot it in my 1022 just for fun. I had a whole bunch of this stuff. So I was like, okay, well, maybe I'll try this out. Um, and sure enough, I did. And I'm going to show you guys the results in a moment. Next, I've got the uh, RWS Semi Auto. I picked this up from uh, Tesro, uh, Asmir over at Tesro Canada. And this stuff, I, I got it for a pretty good deal. Um, I have yet to try it out uh, for accuracy, but uh, I did try it out for uh, velocity. And we're, we're going to see the results for this as well. And then last but not least, I did cover the uh, LE Force here, um, which is, uh, you know, as you all know, the 338 uh, Lapua Magnum of Rimfire Rifles. Uh, it's, uh, it's pretty quick stuff, okay? But uh, without further ado, let me just show you what, what my, my setup was, okay? So basically what I wanted to do um, was get a graph, but I wanted to kind of have a controlled scenario. So I collected data, a 10-shot string, or my velocity out of a 10-shot string at three different uh, data points, okay? We've got down here on the low end, zero degrees F, up here on the high end of 150 degrees F, and then that there, okay? So basically this is this is my freezer. Okay, I, let my, I put my ammo in my freezer. This is my room. I just let my ammo in my room here. And then at 100 degrees half, well, this is uh, using a, uh, a little uh, unit heater, okay? 
a full disclaimer here, uh, this is not recommended. Okay, I do not recommend that you ever heat ammo up to 150 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, I did it in a controlled environment. I pretty much put boxes around my ammo so that it wouldn't heat up because I didn't know how hot my unit heater was going to be. So if, it, if this got way above 150 degrees Fahrenheit, I, I could have potentially actually blown up around. Uh, so I didn't want to do that. Okay, so basically I, I put in a controlled uh, environment and if it blew up, it wouldn't have gone everywhere. So just... Just don't do this. That's that's the conclusion here. But basically, I was trying to get my velocity versus uh, for for each one of the different ammo types at these three temperatures. Okay, so basically, I would calculate what's my velocity there, velocity here, velocity here, and I'd get a line best fit for that one. Next, I would do it for another type, velocity here, uh, you know, velocity here, velocity here for some sort of a uh, high velocity ammo, something like that. And then, you know, let's say we got boom, boom, boom. And, oh, that one looks pretty stable. Okay, basically, I did that for these four types of ammunition. Okay? And here is the output of those results. Okay? Um, so here's the kind of the, the first one. The, the one of importance here is going to be my measured velocities. All right, so you'll notice that for SK Rifle Match, uh, we've got a published velocity here of uh, 1073. Uh, I think I think it might be 1069, but either way, it's 1073-ish. Uh, then at zero degrees Fahrenheit, I've got a measured velocity of 948, 1022, 1047. Okay, at, at zero, 68, and 150. Uh, then that gives me an average, but you know, these three values here correspond to an average of 1006. All right. You know, the difference between this value here and this value here is kind of irrelevant because I don't know what barrel length they were using. My barrel length is different. I'm not too worried about that. Okay. What I'm worried about is these values here, the variation between this value, this value, and this value, and for each one of the different types of ammo. Okay. And, uh, you know, full disclosure, each one of these, each one of these, okay, these are 10 shot, 10 shot strings. All right, so basically I took the average, I took 10 shots into my chrono, I averaged them up, and these are the values that I got, right? So this is a total of, uh, you know, nine, 90 shots, or whatever it is, one, two, three, three by four, uh, so 120 shots total here, okay? It's not just a few shots per string, it's 10 shots per data, or, or per, per temperature and ammo. Uh, and quickly here, you know, if you look, you'll notice that uh, if I just isolate these, okay, we've got SK rifle match, 948, 1022, 1047. So there's quite a, a variation there between 0, 68, and 150, okay? Next, to my surprise, CCI standard velocity, basically published value of 1070, but uh, we've got 1042 at a very cold, 1046, and then 1049. So we can see this is pretty, uh, this is pretty good okay we almost have no i mean if, if this was my gun and i was just doing this for competition i wouldn't bother even include making a graph for this this is conclusively the same velocity across the board no matter what temperature you're shooting in next we have the rws semi-auto okay um and we can see that that one there it has the most extreme spread all right so we've got 977 down at zero we've got 1075 at 68 and then we've got uh, 150 or uh, sorry, uh, uh, 1,152 at 150. So this is a pretty extreme spread here, okay? We're almost talking, uh, we almost have 200, almost 200 feet per second variance between here and there, uh, lowest temperature and highest temperature. And then finally, uh, the, the last one here, LE Force, okay? So 1250, but once again, these values don't really matter. We've got 1163, 1192, and 1208. So this isn't terrible. This is about 40 feet per second variance-ish, okay? Between lowest to highest temperature, which isn't bad. This one, right, RWS is quite extreme. And then this one's pretty much stable. There's no variation at all. And then here we've got um, uh, still a, quite a bit, a bit of variation, okay? About, uh, about 100 feet per second from one to the other. All right, uh, so once again, quick summary there of what these look like. The top one here is SK Rifle Match. And then we've got the CCI Standard, the RWS Semi-Auto, and then we've got the LE, okay? So that's, uh, that's the four different types of ammo that were used here in this test. Okay, so now with that, basically I took it and I did my whole uh, graph approach and I threw it into Excel. Okay, and here's what we see. So basically, 
we've got four lines uh, and this the graph hasn't changed from from our previous uh, approach here okay what I explained over here uh, it's the same it's basically or sorry this is what I was trying to, this approach that I explained is what I did here so we've got uh, at some temperature right we can notice we've got my my zero degrees Fahrenheit we've got 68 degrees Fahrenheit and then we've got 150 degrees Fahrenheit on here on each one of the, the, the horizontal axis and then I've got my three different lines so in the red here we've got SK rifle match in the red next is green we've got CCI standard velocity and next is RWS which is the the, the orange one here and then the blue which is LE force okay so it's a uh, you know a little hard to see the colors in the video I'm sure but basically we've got SK all right I'll just write it up we've got SK rifle match uh, this is a CCI standard. Uh, here's our RWS semi-auto, and then this is LE force. Okay, so here's our four plots. What you'll notice, okay, um, this is you know fairly basic, but as we're you want this line to be as straight as possible. Okay, you want this slope here to be as horizontal as possible because basically, if you have a completely horizontal slope, that means that your ammo, okay, your velocity does not change regardless of your temperature all right so you're gonna have the same you're gonna have the same velocity regardless of temperature so just based on that you can see that the two clear winners here are going to be cci standard okay because it's that's pretty much flat and then le force because that's also quite flat okay and then we can see that the rws and the sk rifle match they both have a slope that's quite significant uh and um that's you know gonna have an effect on it basically from this these graphs i exported our lines of best fit okay basically these lines are the equation for each one of these slopes so we've got sk rifle match corresponds to this we've got uh, this guy here which corresponds to cci standard we've got the this equation here which corresponds to rws and then we got this guy which corresponds to le force all right from those equations i was able to make the next table which is our predicted velocities all right so basically that's, let me just fold the page here. Okay, so basically from these equations, I'm able to throw in, you know, we can see we got 0 0.65, 0 0.65, 0 0.5, 0 0.05, 1.16. Okay, these are basically the, the equations of the line to be able to predict what my velocity is at 59, right around here. Okay, what's my velocity here at 59? And then what's my velocity at uh, 40 or 104? Okay, so maybe right around, you know, right around here, something like that. So basically, we got uh, 59 degrees Fahrenheit, and then 104 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, 15 degrees Celsius and 40 degrees Celsius. Why did I pick to gather my predicted velocities at these two temperatures? Basically, it's because, by and large, I see myself shooting between 50 and 40 degrees Celsius. I don't really see myself shooting in 150 degree Fahrenheit temperatures or zero. So the, the next part of my video wouldn't really make a whole lot of sense if I had used these values for predicted velocities. So basically what, what we're gonna see here is that we've got at, at 15 degrees Celsius, which is a very reasonable temp shooting temperature, I guess. You know, you, I could see myself shooting at that temperature without a problem. You know, I probably need a light jacket. I'm not freezing at the, the range, nor am I sweating like crazy. Uh, we got 997, 1030. Okay, that's over 30 feet per second variance. We've got now uh, CCI standard velocity. We've got two, which is pretty much negligible. And then we've got RWS. This is quite significant as well. Okay, about 50, over 50 feet per second variance. And then finally, we've got this guy, which is uh, about 15 or so, you know, 14 feet per second variance. So it's quite reasonable. From this information, okay, here comes the, the most important part of pretty much the whole video. It's this predicted bullet drop, okay? Your estimated holdover, with, you know, at different distances, okay? At different distances with a 50 yard zero. So basically what I did for using my ballistic calculator, I, I went for each type of ammo, you know, I'm realizing I didn't put the ammo type here. So uh, I will just tell you what it is. This it's the same order as it was before, but SK rifle match. We've got CCI standard RWS, and then LE force. Okay, sorry for not writing that on the left here, but basically that's what we have, okay? So what I'm trying to demonstrate here is this is, is your, your, your uh, 
whatever distance you may be shooting at, 100, 200, 300 meters. This is your predicted uh, holdover that you need to do at 59 Fahrenheit, or whatever amount of clicks that you have to put in your scope at 59 Fahrenheit. And here's the amount of clicks that you have to do at 40 degrees Celsius, or at 104 degrees Fahrenheit. And then I did that for all types of ammo at these three temperatures. Now, of course, these are just, these are, once again, based off of this plot, okay? I've only got three data points here, so if you get more data points, you'll probably get a different uh, kind of, um, a, a different slope, essentially, and thus your predicted velocities will, will be slightly different. But this is to give you an idea of why this, 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 this ammo that has no, very little variation, same thing here, why these two ammos are very, you know, advantageous in, in, a, in a CRPS or really any shoot of a long range environment. Okay, so let's look at this. Um, basically what we see here is that at 100 meters, we've got uh, our SK rifle match. If we're shooting at a hot, lower temperature, we've got to consider 11 inches of drop. If we're shooting at a higher temperature, we've got 8.7 inches of drop. Okay, now considering that a typical target at these distances is going to be about, I don't know, call it 3 inches. Nah, we've got a change here of 2.3 inches. All right, this is our little triangle, means delta. So basically we've got a change of 2.3 inches. So if you're shooting a 3 inch target, you can very easily miss that target. Uh, if you if you don't do your time right, you're just missing the target purely based off of uh, the variation in velocity. If you don't consider if the effects of temperature, okay, basically this table is telling you how much are you going to miss by if you calculated your velocity at, at whatever temperature and you're not considering the effects of temperature. Okay, that, that's what this table is really showing you. So what we'll see is that if you're not considering it at you know at uh, at 100 meters, you're going to have a 2.3 inch point uh, shift in your point of impact if you're not ignore in uh, if you're not including the effects of temperature at um, 200 meters you have a six inch variance and then if you're not in including it at 300 meters you have an 18 inch variance okay so this is this is this alone should kind of be a little bit of a, a red flag that says that you really want to consider uh, one of two things here you either want to ensure that you have ammo that is temperature insensitive or you have ammo uh, that or you have a good prediction you can you can actually predict what your actual velocity is going to be to avoid problems with this okay so let's look at this as well so we got uh this one here so we got our cci standard we can see that at 59 we've got pretty much the same all right we got the same point of impact so we have a, a shift of zero inches okay here at uh, 200 we've got a shift of uh, 71 so three inches okay three inch variance so basically at 300 whether you'd be shooting in this temperature or this temperature. And then at 300, we've got a shift here in the point of impact of about 11 inches. All right, looking down next here to our RWS, which uh, rem reminding you that RWS has the steepest slope, which essentially it is affected the most uh, by variations in temperature. It also is affected the most in terms of your, your shift in, in your amount of holdover in different temperatures. So here at 100, it doesn't really matter. One inch variance, no big deal. At 200, we've got a nine inch variance. And then at 300, we've got a 25 inch variance, okay? This is very significant. Um, and then once again here at 18, uh, sorry, for our LE Force, high velocity ammunition, but that is fairly stable. You know, we don't have a whole lot of, of variation between these two extreme temperatures, which means in our operating temperatures, we're basically between here and here. There's not a whole lot of variation in our, our velocities here for our two operating range, which basically shows very much here in this graph. We can see that we've got a shift at 100 of, of 1 inch, uh, 4 inches, and then 11 inches, okay? So I, there's, there's two things that I, that I want to kind of highlight about this, this what's going on here. Uh, one of them is this this 25 inch variance. So basically what this 25 inches means is if you, once again, collected your data at, at a certain temperature, okay, you collected your dope at a certain temperature, and then you went to the match and the match was at a different temperature, and you didn't account for that, you're going to be off by, you could be off by up to 25 inches, okay, at 300 meters. Now, I, I've shot the match, so I know what typical targets are used. You're either going to see uh, one of these, uh, these IDPA style uh, targets or a, a big bore here. Now, pardon my art but you know you got yourself a, a big boar something like that okay and then we got a little pigtail so we've got the big boar target or we've got our, our idpa target now i'm not certain but i believe this target is 30 inches 
and, and I could be wrong here. So if I'm wrong, you know, don't quote me on it, but I, I believe it's around that. And then we've got our big bore, which is about, uh, I don't know. I, it's probably 20 to 25 inches ish. All right. Now, if you're aiming basically center of mass here for each one of these, and you're using this ammo and you didn't account for your, your different, your, your point of impact change due to different uh, temperatures outside. Basically you didn't account for this. Okay. Well, but you didn't account for this is really the problem. You can hit up to 25 inches low. So if you're aiming here, you'll completely miss the target. Okay. You either go high or low by 25 inches, depending on, you know, how, what your, your dope was calculated at. Same thing here. You can hit way off target here or way above. That is a, a big, a big no, no, you know? Um, and if, I mean, if we look at it, it's, it's not like you, you have a complete saving grace, even though we, th this ammo here, if we look at CCI standard velocity, it's pretty much stable. Okay. Yeah. we got 1045, you know, we got 1045 and then we got 10, uh, 1047. Well, basically this is more or less 1046. I I'm willing, you know, this, this is a pretty well stable ammunition across the board, but we still have 11 inches variance. Why, why would that be? Why do we have 11 inches of variance here, even though we can tell that the velocity is the same? Well, that comes down, my hypothesis here, I haven't really read a whole lot into it, but basically it comes down to your your bullet, um, your your air resistance, okay? So um, you've got your, your density of air, which is equal to uh, pressure uh, over, uh, let me see here, it's your gas constant times temperature, okay? It doesn't really matter a whole lot. All I'm trying to show you here is that your density of air depends on your pressure, okay? So whenever you guys have your ballistic calculators here, typically I've seen it in inch, uh, inches of mercury, all right? And then you've got temperature, okay? These are two things that your, your ballistic calculator definitely takes into consideration, okay? Either in degrees Fahrenheit or whatever. Um, and then, uh, well, this is, a, this is a constant, so we'll just assume that that's one, okay? Basically, what this means here is that, yes, even though you've, you've calculated your, your velocity and you've known, oh, look at this, this ammo, it's all pretty much the same. I should be expecting the same point of impact at no matter the temperature I'm shooting in. That's not true. And the reason why is you have this other variable that's included here, and that's, that's your air density, okay? And your air density, the denser the air, the more resistance you're going to have, and thus the more pressure drop, uh, the more pressure drop, sorry, the more bullet drop you're going to have. Okay, so uh, you have to you have to really consider this as well because basically, as your you know as your 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 temperature goes up, your your density goes down, and thus you have less bullet drop. Okay, and we can definitely see that here, right? As our temperature goes up, okay, 59 to to 104, our bullet drop goes down. All right, well that, that's basically what this is saying here. Uh, and then in a similar way, uh, this one doesn't have as much of an impact because pressure doesn't really vary all that much. Uh, but basically, same thing here. As your pressure goes up, well, it has the in inverse effect, uh, or sorry, it, it has the same effect. So as your pressure goes up, so does your density. Uh, so you're, you get more bullet drop with the higher the pressure, right? And th this is also apparent, you know, if you're shooting at low altitude, you're going to get uh, uh, more bullet drop because of the fact that there's... Uh, you have more air resistance there. The, the, the air is more densely packed there. So your bullet is going to slow down faster and thus it's going to have more bullet drop. Similarly, if you're shooting up high altitude, the air is very, very thin out there. So it doesn't have as much air resistance. So then you have less bullet drop and then your bullet can go further. Okay. But that was kind of the second point. The second point is even though I, this has a very stable temperature and so does LE force, you still have variances here of about 11 inches. So what does that mean? To me, it means I want to minimize this error as much as possible. Now I'm going to have errors that I can predict. Uh, I'm going to have errors in, due to air resistance and they can be predicted. And I'm also going to have errors due to this predicted uh, velocity, okay? Differences in my velocity, which can also be predicted. But if they're not predicted, you know, basically you're not accounting for this 25 inches and you're not accounting for this 11 inches. So you can potentially miss, all right? That's really all this comes down to is you may miss your target because you haven't considered environmental uh, conditions or you haven't considered variations in your bullets, um, you know, your, your bullets uh, muzzle velocity. So, all right, I guess it's time to, to wrap this up. I've been going on for far too long here. What is my conclusions for the video here, okay? Uh, 
basically conclusions is uh, me, myself, and I personally, I would prefer use ammo with stable velocity. Okay, and that means basically, if we look at our four options here, um, I'd like to use one of these two. Okay, now there, are, I'm sure there are very more options than that, but I would probably want to use one of these two. 20, the CCI standard or the LE force. Now, I haven't really tested either one of these for accuracy, so I'd probably test them both and see which one is more accurate. All right, but basically, you want to use uh, ammo that is stable, has a stable velocity uh, with, you know, with temperature. Okay, regardless of your temperature, you have a stable velocity. Uh, and then the other thing is, if you can't do that, if you're if you're uh, very connected, let's say. You know, whatever. Let's say you started shooting uh, RWS semi-auto, you know, and, and you love this stuff. You know, you got a whole brick of it and you absolutely want to shoot this stuff. Well, you have to be aware of that, right? This is kind of conclusion number two, Conclu or conclusion number one. Conclusion number two is you have to be aware that this thing will vary uh, its velocity as a function of temperature. So you basically have to go, th well, I, you don't have to. I would recommend that you go through this process, okay, basically of, of determining a graph and finding out this slope. So you can better predict what the velocity of this will be uh, giving uh, the, the, the outside temperature. All right, so kind of one is use ammo with the stable velocity or two is, uh, is um, you know, gather uh, data points. Uh, yeah, for better prediction. All right, basically better prediction okay once again it's better prediction because as i alluded to earlier you know you're going to collect these data points and you may end up with a data point here 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 and then what that's kind of telling you is that well this is kind of this 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 ammo may be sporadic i'm not saying it is because it does seem to be following if we look at our three data points we've got one two three they're, they're fairly linear but it could be it could be all over the place so you have to be able to predict that right you have to gather data points for better better prediction um, and I mean, that's kind of conclusion number one, conclusion number two. There's not a whole lot more I, I can say about that. Um, other than sorry for this video being way too long. Uh, and, uh, you know, by, here's my, my disclaimer. I'm not an expert, okay? I'm really not an expert. It's, it's very possible that I, I said something that was uh, wrong. Uh, you know, I would hope that's not the case, but, but if something that I said was wrong, uh, by all means, please just uh, bring it up uh, through like some sort of a constructive criticism. Uh, I'll definitely address it. And uh, you know, if there's if I need to make a correction to my video, by all means, I will do that. Uh, but, uh, you know, without further ado, I think it's time to, to end it. We're at uh, 40 minutes here of total video time. And I, I want to stop bothering you guys. So anyways, thank you. Have a good day. Bye now.